Hello everyone, welcome to the Formula World podcast again. After a lot of technical issues, uh, yeah, we, it's been a crazy evening for me and for my guest today, who is Diane. I will introduce her to you in a little bit. We're going to talk about the 2024 calendar full of uh, surprises, uh, in my view, and uh, also about the controversy with track limits after the Australian, Australian Grand Prix, uh, with a lot of laps deleted, uh, both in the race and qualifying. So a lot of things to talk about. So my guest today is Diane. Hello, how are you? Welcome. Hello. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I can't wait to start talking about this because it's been uh, a hectic day full of uh, breaking news with the calendar, yes. with a lot of uh, special liveries for for Silverstone, and also um, everyone talking about track limits and this this controversy, which has been uh, something that everyone is talking about right now after the the 140 laps deleted in, in qualifying last Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we're going to yes. talk about this. We want to, to know your, your opinion on this. And, and yeah, we, we will try to fix Formula One. <laughs> in, yes, in, uh, yes, definitely. So yeah. what if, you, if we start talking about the, the calendar? Because it's like the, the highest uh, news of, of the day. So I'm going to to share it uh, here so that people can watch it. But when you saw it, what was your first thought? Well, I saw that between one race, they have four weeks of uh, no races. So that was really something that I was, you know, looking at. I'm not really sure which race it was exactly, but uh, it was like, I think, I think it's good for the drivers to have some time off, you know, because they don't really have that much days. But for the fans, it's not that nice because, you know, we want to see races. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, when I saw it, I think uh, the races in Europe, like Hungary, Belgium, Netherlands, Italy, I think that's very nice that they are still, you know, after each other. For the fans, you know, it's it's nice for the fans in Europe. They can go to more races. It's in the vacation time, so that's that's really nice. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. I, I think they, I mean, the F one made a great effort trying to uh, locate the circuits uh, near to to each other for next year, which is it was uh, nonsense. I mean, traveling to. Uh, to Asia and then to Europe, then to America, mm -hmm. then it was a nonsense. And they made a, a big effort. I mean, we can we can see that uh, starting in in Bahrain and, and Saudi Arabia, they are going to Australia and then to Japan and and China, which is back in the calendar. It's yeah. the earliest uh, Japanese Grand Prix in history uh, because we will have it in April. So it's 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 going to be very very soon in the calendar. I think it's uh, a, a great uh, point for the new calendar to have this, this uh, like regionalizing the, 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 the calendar and the races. Uh, but we have a big surprise here in the beginning of the season, which is that the Bahrain and Saudi Arabia Grand Prix will be hosted on the Saturday instead yeah. of Sunday. Yes, that, that was some, that's something you know, very different. And I'm not sure if they explained why, but uh, yeah, they, they I think say it's very interesting. Because, because of the, the Ramadan, which is, uh, uh, which has a special date on Sundays and they wanted to, to respect this in this country. So they tried to, to move it to Saturday, but it's quite surprising being a Formula One. It is, yes. I think it's, of course, it's good that they think of, you know, everything and that they uh, want to respect the, the, you know, the things they have there. So I think it's a good decision that still the races can, you know, uh, be held there. Um, but yeah, it's really surprising. I, I didn't really expect it, but I think something new is always nice to see and see how it, you know, will, will, uh, will end up. So I think it's pretty interesting, to be honest. 
yeah yeah i agree i mean for me i don't really like uh, the season is starting in in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia because I mean call me classic but I liked uh, when when season started in Australia as always mm -hmm. and uh, yeah in Bahrain is yeah. like a bit weird but uh, but yeah it's what we have right now the the money is moving the the whole F1 world and uh, yeah this is what we have right now and I also noticed what you said. Uh, it's a little bit um, weird that we have like a summer break as always in August, and then we have a race in September and another yeah. break until yeah. the last uh, weeks of uh, October. Uh, yes. And we have like a yeah. huge break between Singapore and, and the USA and Austin. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what, what are your thoughts about this? This yeah, time. as I said, yeah, yeah as, I, as I said earlier, you know, it's um, I think you know the fans are not really happy with it. Like myself, I'm not really happy with it, but yeah. it's just like a little bit mixed because I think some drivers will be, you know, very happy that this is happening. But you know, for for example, the rookies that will be there or drivers that are driving in their second year, you know, they want to race to you know be better. And if you race and then stop and then race and stop. You know, it's really, yeah, you can't really get that, you know, schedule of being better and uh, improving. And so I think there are a lot of, you know, for me, there are mixed feelings with it. Uh, but I can I can really understand that there are people really happy with that this is happening in the, in the sport. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, it's quite, I mean, I'm concerned about this because... If we have a 2024 season, I hope it's not the same. But if it's similar to this one, we will have a very dominant uh, driver. I'm not going to say a name, but if we think of this this year, we will we could have a main uh, a main candidate for the for the title. So uh, around uh, round uh, yeah around. 18, 19, we could have like a like a big gap between the the leader and the second uh, in the standings. So it could be like a flop for the mm -hmm. for the rest of the year. I mean, people could be least interested in in watching the races if if they actually know who is going to to win the championship because yeah, exactly, it could be yeah. decided. So. So I, I think it's not the best timing considering it's the, the last uh, stage of the season. So I, I'm a bit concerned about this. Yep. But yeah, anyway, I, I can understand, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, did, did you expect any other track which is not there? Or, or would you, I mean, which track uh, which is not in there would you like to, to see? Well, I think that the Turkish Grand Prix I really uh, like as a Bottas fan. I really enjoyed uh, that race there, and um, <clears throat> like it's also because I've been a few times in Turkey and I really, you know, uh, liked it there. So also the track. I saw the track. It's it's really nice and the location is nice, and the races were pretty. Like they weren't boring. They were really you know unexpected things were happening. So I I maybe. Like didn't expect it to be on the calendar, but I really hoped that it, that it would be there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's nothing new here in the in the calendar. For me, the the last part of the of the season will be um, not boring because we have uh, Brazil, which is always always a great uh, weekend. There's uh, a lot of uh, good racing and a lot of uh, on track overtakes and a lot of, of action on track but uh, yeah we have like um, Las Vegas we have uh, Qatar and we have Abu Dhabi which are not the most uh, popular circuits on the, on the calendar so how do you feel yeah. about this in, in your opinion which circuit should be the, the last one on the calendar uh, like yeah, you know, I think Las Vegas is um, 
a little bit cir cir circus. You know what I mean? I think it's more about the the money and about the things they can achieve with it. You know, also the famous people that will be there. And you already see it a little bit with, you know, Miami. Uh, you really see that, you know, the the famous people are trying to be the, you know, the the stars there when it's not about them. And it's also really, you know, concerning for me that, um, yeah, they're, they don't care uh, about, it's not, the, the main thing is not really about Formula One anymore. And that's really concerning. I really want to be a, a race, you know, what you see in, for example, um, Silverstone. It's really, you know, nice race there. Uh, and it's really about the racing, you know, Mercedes and, and, and that kind of things. Uh, and I think the races in, you know, Italy, Monza, it's really about the racing, about the fans, fashion and everything. And then you go to, you know, Las Vegas, Miami, uh, and you really see that the fans are not the big part of it anymore and the drivers. It's more like glitter and glamour around it. And uh personally i really don't like it so i think las vegas would be my least favorite um on the calendar for this year mm -hmm. yeah i mean i, I agree with you I, I i think that it it must be a, a balance between of course uh, a big show because formula one is 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 what it is is a a great sport, but it also have a, a part which is uh, basically the, the show. And I agree that that we have this kind of, of Grand Prix like, like Las Vegas or Miami, where there's like a big uh, yeah, a big show out of the of the track. But we need to have good races. Uh, if we don't have the, that uh, the engagement for the sport will will decrease and. Uh, it will be just uh, like uh, in money. People put yeah. in money to have the Grand Prix in the cities, and uh, and no one will care about racing. And that's not how it should evolve. Uh, I think it, they should take care of the of the good circuits. Uh, Austria has has proven that that classic circuits can be an are normally better than, than street circuits. And we yep. have a lot of street circuits in the next uh, season. So for me, yep. it should be a, a balance and uh, we don't have that balance right now. I think mm, we, I, I miss uh, classic circuits like uh, Notebook Ring, uh, Hockenheim, or also, uh, I don't know, uh, Mugello, circuit that, that we used to have in the in the past that yes we could, yes could uh, could provide good good racing and we have instead of those circuits we have like las vegas or, or miami which are not the best uh, tracks so yeah exactly uh, in order to to summarize a little bit uh which are the your your favorite uh, the the aspects that do you like the most from the calendar and the worst for next um year. yeah like the things i i you know like the most is as i said before the the races in um europe are in the vacation so um like many you know younger fans and um people can go there uh, also, you can, you know, go from race to race if you're able to do that. And I think that's really a nice, nice thing they uh, they do. Um, one thing that I, as you also said before, that we don't start in Australia. You know, that's just some, you know, classic thing that was always nice. And it's really like this sort of, like, I have to wake up early and you really feel, okay, the season started. And, you know, it's it was always really nice to to have that feeling and now it's you know not like that anymore it's a little bit different um well i also like that there are you know many street circuits because i am a big fan of street circuits um i really enjoy Baku Bor, for example that's uh, my favorite race 
Um, so I really, you know, look out for the street circuits. Uh, and I think one thing that's really important to say this, uh, I was talking about it with some other uh, Formula One fans. Uh, we were talking about Spa, you know, so the Delano, the, the Dutch boy, uh, he crashed there and uh, unfortunately uh, passed away. And um, I think if Spa doesn't want to change anything, Formula One should just stop with driving there because, you know, it could be all fun, you know, Spa um, uh, history, legendary, but I think, you know, once you you see this again, it's enough. So if Spa doesn't want to change anything, fine, but then Formula One should stop it. And I think those things are, you know, not really positive for me. And same goes for Saudi Arabia. It's so, it, I think personally, it's a dangerous track and um, it could go really wrong. And the driver said the same. They said like, you know, it's really dangerous. It is that we need to drive there, but you know, we don't really want to drive there. So I think Formula One should also listen more what the drivers want with the circuits like that, with the calendar. Yeah. Yes, especially when you have like a video series racing there because F1 uh, safety has improved a lot in the in the last few years and, and that's a, a reality. Uh, but uh, in feature series, it's more difficult to to have this this safety uh, this this safety in, in cars that are not as expensive as, as Formula One cars. So we yeah, we saw uh, sadly we have seen a lot of terrible incidents uh, in Spa, especially in the same part of the circuit, and we saw it in in 2019 with with Antoine Aubert. We saw it again in uh, in a very dangerous incident in W Series in Spa as well. Uh, thankfully, no one was was hurt there, uh, but it was really really dangerous. We mm -hmm. saw in in, like, in 24 hours of Spa, and and we have seen again it this this year. And something needs to be done in Spa if, if they want to to remain in the calendar. History is not enough. To, it's not a reason to, to stay there if you are not moving to, to improve your, your safety, especially when, when Formula One is, is always talking about this, this safety uh, equipment and, and uh, the safety of the of the car. And But if, if the circuits are not doing the same, it's just yeah, not, not makes sense. So, yeah. So yeah. I agree with you that that something needs to be done in Spa, or otherwise they they should remove it from from the calendar. There exactly. were rumors about, about South Africa joining the the calendar, yep. and, but uh, the the circuit is still not ready to be in the calendar. That's something quite weird because I remember Saudi Arabia being in the calendar and without a circuit built. Yep. and with the system started and they didn't have um, a track so mm -hmm. so yeah it was a little bit weird but yeah i understand that it's not the same for, for formula one to to i mean the guarantees are not the same talking about saudi arabia which is a very rich country and south africa which is not uh, mm -hmm. in the same level uh, so yeah but anyway yeah. i think something needs to be done in, in span this is uh, unacceptable to to remain with the same uh, circuit with the same uh, safety if these things are, are happening so this is simply yeah. unacceptable uh, and yeah. for me the the my favorite part of the calendar is that they are um, trying to organize it in a better way i still don't understand that uh, travel to Canada, it's something that I will never understand. Why is it in the middle of Monaco and Spain, yeah. which are so close to each other? I don't understand, but no. uh, that's what it is. Uh, but I think they they <coughs> sorry they they did a, a great effort 
and they have um, yeah we, we have like a very clear uh, zones uh, of the <clears throat> in the calendar and i liked <clears throat> that the nexus between europe and, and and asia is that they have a race in in azerbaijan that it's in the middle so so it's quite natural to do this this travel and the thing i like the least is the timing because i don't understand that that break after the summer break which is uh, one month without racing with no sense and in the last part of the of the calendar so i don't really understand why they did this so we will see i don't know if they are keeping this this space in the in the year because they think that some races could be like uh, delayed or, or something like that they have more information that than us but at the moment i don't understand why they did this why they did this so we will see uh, we will see what happens with the calendar we have this uh, this first uh, launch and we will see how it it, it evolves now moving to another topic which is track limits uh what were your thoughts after the qualifying in austria this weekend because i was yeah. mad it was it was crazy like i think how many laps it did it, you know remove i think it was like 47 laps something like yeah. that qualifying yeah is it yeah. there were like 1000 uh, more than 1000 yeah it's it's crazy like yeah of course at the other side you know it is in austria so you know there are track limits so like yeah you know there's just this race where it's like pretty crazy but i think it was you know it was also a little bit fun in the race that the drivers were really you know uh talking with each other not with each other but to the team about like yeah he goes off all the time and there was really this kind of you know thing in it I, like of course it was fun to watch but for the drivers you know they just want to focus on the driving you know be the fastest and if, if they have to you know watch every time to the to, to the people in front of them to uh you know see if they have the track limits then i don't know if you really enjoy it anymore in the end but uh, yeah personally i think they should just you know maybe make it a little bit easier because it was sometimes a little bit annoying especially in qualifying so yeah i think they should maybe change something but yeah you know it's there so you know yeah it, it was a big a big mess in in qualifying because we saw uh i mean the q1 finishing and then there were laps being deleted <laughs> In the, yeah. in the gap between Q1 and Q2, we didn't know which driver was whether qualified to Q2 and which one weren't. It was a big mess, and and in Q2 it was even bigger because uh, Checo had uh, all laps deleted in in Q2 and he was like fifteenth. Uh, uh, something that I know. What do you think about it? but that would have never happened to to max i mean checo had a lot of opportunities to to set a, a time and uh, with a red bull and he didn't he were mm -hmm. he was out of the track in in every um, single yeah. fast lane. so i don't know so <laughs> I, I don't know even yeah, when we joke was like the yeah. most consistent yeah. driver <laughs> with truck limits yeah. this weekend. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm pretty, um, like, you know, really thinking about it. But I also think it's, you know, Checo had a bad race, um, you know, before Austria. And, uh, you know, the pressure is really on him. And uh, I think it's really, you know, harsh to say on someone like Checo because he proven that he can really race and that he can really do it. But I think because of the, like, it's really kind of, I also saw it changing with the, the Dutch fans because I'm from the Netherlands. So I, you know, I there's Max Verstappen is king here. So um, I really saw it changing with the Dutch fans also after qualifying in Austria, 
you know, they were supporting Checo all the time last season. And now since he is, you know, fighting for the championship, they're basically done with it and he gets, uh, you know, really, like, not hated, but, you know, you know, how they talk about him. And I think it's also, you know, this feeling from the team, they are constantly saying, if you don't perform, you will get kicked out. If you don't perform, you will get kicked out. And we can all, you know, you know, see if our own work or whatever, if we have that kind of pressure, we will make mistakes. And um, he don't get the, you know, trust from the team to make a mistake. You know, if if someone make a mistake and they are, you know, you get, they get trust from the team, they would probably say it's okay. But if, if Checo would make a mistake or someone in, you know, the top teams, they would get, you know, punished for it. And I think that was really, you really saw it in, in, in Austria that he had a bad race before and now he had to prove himself and it went wrong again. And you really see that kind of schedule being there now. Okay, you had a bad race, you try again, it was bad again, and now he has to just do something about it. But I understand your point. Like, if he wants to have a good lab, he can have a good lab. It will never happen to Max. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I know he's under pressure in Red Bull. Uh, it's a very uh, harsh team with, with drivers. Uh, especially when you are not uh, the number one driver, because it's obvious that that he's not. But it's not the first time this this season that he is uh, failing in qualifying, and that's um, a, a lot of that, that's a big problem for the team. Of course, they are going to win the the drivers and teams championship this year uh, yeah. for sure, but. Uh, He's not scoring the, the same amount of points as, as he should. And even Alonso is, is quite close to him in the standings with a slower car. And uh, what, what I say is that, that he can't fail anymore. He, he's been four races out of the Q3 with the fastest car on, on yeah. track. And uh, yeah. it's okay that happens in, in Monaco, you can make a mistake. Uh, it's a very difficult technical track, but we've seen Monaco, we've seen uh, Canada, we've seen uh, Austria, very different circuits and he's failing in, in everyone. Yeah. So it's yeah. a, uh, a difficult situation for him. And, and talking about track limits, if you you can just slow down in the last corners and then you will do a, a good lap enough yeah, for, for exactly. getting into Q3 with that car yeah. for sure. It's very easy to change it, but, but yeah, but I think you're, you're right. Like, um, you know, if you saw the cars who were in Q, Q3, Checo should be easy, be there, you know, it's, it's, you know, then maybe not having the first time, but Q3, you know, in a Red Bull, like it's, it's, it was so nonsense for me that he wasn't there. And, yeah. um, you know, has been, has been in Q3 more times than Czech or this is. Yeah. With the has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw it. It's, it's crazy. And, you know, of course, the drivers were really complaining about the, the track limits. And Checo, of course, also, because he was out of Q3. But, yeah, I think uh, your point is, you know, the truth, because you saw it in Monaco, you saw it, you know, everywhere, the last four races. So, um, yeah, should Red Bull do something about it? Um, I don't know. I think they should just let it be for now. And then I think they should change it for next season. Also, because... You know, they know with Mox that he basically knows everything on the track, off the track. If there's something wrong, they really have that that person. And I think Mox will also not leave Red Bull, but for the person next to it, I think it, it will be really difficult also to find because no one is faster than Mox at the moment. But um, yeah, I think they should replace Jacko next season. Yeah. I, I agree. I don't know. Well, I actually know who would I like to, to see in Red Bull next year. Um, 
Yeah, I would really like to, to see Yuki in Red Bull. Same. <laughs> but yeah. I, I, he would do a great job. He's fast. Mm -hmm. in, he is yeah. uh, well managed in the team. He will uh, get good results. I don't know if better than, than Checo, but uh, Checo is a, a veteran driver and he should be more consistent in the team. And he's not being that. But yep. we will see. Then yep. apart from, from qualifying, we, we had also a very difficult race to follow. Even after the end of the race, we had a lot of deleted laps. We have a lot of penalties. Uh, yeah. Paulo Sainz was fighting for that P2, finished P6 uh, due to the penalty. Uh, Stefan yeah. Ocon received a, a 30 second penalty after the race. So, what do you think about this? Yeah, I think, you know, I think they should just, if it's really necessary, you know, if there was a crash and someone got out of the race, you should look at it. But I think if you, these kind of things can really ruin the sport because. You know, people really fight for those plays. People fight for one point. And, you know, I think if it's not necessary, like a track limit, you know, just stop it after a race. If you can't see it in the race, just stop it. Because, you know, it's it's not that necessary. And as I said, the drivers are really fighting for every point they can get. They're on the limits. And, um, you know, especially for the cars like, like Alfa Romeo, Haas, uh, you know, uh, Williams, if they are at the 10th position and a track limit after the race, like hours after the race, you know, and they will be 11th or 12th, it can really ruin everything in the mindset. So I think they should, you know, just stop it if it's after the race, if it's not that necessary. Yeah, because uh, how much time can you uh, win with that uh, track limit? Uh... I mean, one tenth. Yeah, it's nothing. And if you do it four times, it's it's four tenths, and you mm -hmm. have a, a five tenth penalty, and yeah, that makes no sense. I mean, you. I don't know. L later, I will. I will. We will suggest uh, the way to to solve this problem. We are going to to fix uh, Formula One uh, from here. It will be very easy, and we will send this this. A podcast to to Dominic Ali and he will yeah. apply that rules yeah. for the next phase. Yeah, of course uh, he will. I think something needs to be done here as well. It's not normal and it's not uh, natural in the sport to have post race penalties due to track limits. I mean, it's not uh, fair for drivers. No, like no. Carlos Sainz was fighting for the whole race. Uh, he was recovering out of, of places uh, due to the bad strategy from, from Ferrari once again. <laughs> and uh, yeah. he didn't deserve the, that uh, P6 finish. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's really disappointed, yes. And also because the, the race uh, finished and, and you didn't really know if those... Uh, results were the final ones or, or not so mm -hmm. it's something that imagine that in every single race that like the race finished and and then you can lose your your podium or your win or your points yeah i know uh i know so let's fix it uh yep how yep. can we fix this problem um well, yeah, how can we fix this problem? It's just removing some, like, track limit points. I think at some points they should be there because drivers will really, you know, the drivers know where the track limits are. So if they can maybe get advantage of it, they will do it. So I think at some point, at some points, they should get the track limits. But I think this was too much, way too much. So track limits are okay, but not this much. So I think, yeah, how you can fix it is maybe, you know, also the places where you can get the most uh, time, 
they should have the track limits there. But as you said before, if you can get so little, they should just ban it because it it, it ruins it. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, if you you have the 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 curves that will slow you if you go too much into the the upside of the track. So you you are not going to win a lot of of time going to to that uh, curve. So yeah, I I agree with you. If they want to to apply track limits, just put gravel there, and no one will will have this this truck limit uh, I, I mean no one will go to the road to the gravel if they go the race yeah. will be finished so yep. we are not yep. going to see these these problems if you put gravel there they don't want to do it because uh, there could be a huge number of safety cars and these kind of things the driver go go wide but i think it it's the natural uh, solution for this problem more than having a, a sensor there to, to monitor AI size the the track limits I think yeah. that's not uh, natural to have like yeah. a, with the football referee that now can uh, watch the actions on our screen I mean that's not uh, positive for the sport but my solution would be no track limits I mean yeah if everyone finds a better, a faster line, and they need to go um, ten centimeters more wide than, than the track, just do it. I mean, we in in the Indy car, drivers are allowed to, to do that, and there's a lot of action on track, and there's no problem with with safety and this kind of things because there are wider. Um, I mean the wide extension to to go, so so you will not have any problem of safety here. And if there is gravel, you will you will go wide. And if there is uh, asphalt, then you you can do it, and everyone can do it. So there will be no advantages for for anyone. Mm -hmm. So my opinion yes. that could be the solution and track limits should be applied only if there's a wheel-to-wheel a -wheel battle and someone forced uh, another driver to go out of the of the track then i think it's where truck limits should be applied if you yeah. push another driver out of the track and it's not the fast line then you can receive the penalty but if you are p17 and you have no one ahead of you and no one behind you and you go a little bit wide there's no point of having the penalty there no it, it's not no i think i think i agree with you and as you said there are so i think the racing you take away the racing a little bit you know as you said with the indy car uh that they're allowed to do you know basically everything um you know that's really it's really fun to watch also because the drivers can really, you know, show how they drive instead of, you know, driving by all the rules. Um, I think, I think your answer is the, is the best answer and the best solution, uh, how to, you know, fix this problem and like really watch some real racing again. Could be, could be, uh, Formula One, please uh, take notes from this from this video, and I will have no problem if you use my idea for <laughs> or or no. for the Jan's idea for for the future in F1. Uh, we will see uh, what what happens. But uh, drivers are not happy, so so, so no. I, I have the feeling that something is going to to change in this uh, in this conversation with Formula One. So yeah. it's been a great talk uh, about this. Uh, you are always welcome to, to join the podcast again in the future. And it's been a, a pleasure talking with you here. Uh, where can people find you on social media if you want to share your, your yeah, profile? Uh, yeah, they can, they can uh, follow me on uh, TikTok. I have TikTok. That's the same name as my Instagram. 
So uh, yeah, it's just Diana dot F one, and uh, it will be really nice to uh, have some more followers that are interested in Formula One. Also, new people, you know, everyone is welcome. Perfect. So so you know what to do. Follow her, follow us as well. Subscribe, and uh, we will do more podcast now that uh, we are started with this new uh, section in the in the page we're going to do a lot of videos talking about uh, latest news and every controversial aspect of motorsport because we love um, sending hate to the FIA <laughs> now because it's it's always interesting yeah. to share ideas opinions and but always being respectful with with everyone so yes. uh, thank you for joining us uh, have a good yes, day and you. see you in the next video bye 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 bye